Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always um, watch our recordings um, at your convenience. We do record the show every week. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Um, both our live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, the most of you here today are from Nebraska, I assume, considering what the topic is today, but just for anyone coming in from outside. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, um, and that is for all types of libraries in the state. So you will find things on our show for publics, academics, K-12, corrections, special museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything, our real criteria only is just something to do with libraries. Um, something libraries are doing, something you think they could be doing. It's all across the board. So you can find, definitely find something there for you. Um, before we get into today's topic, I want to briefly pop over to our Library Commission homepage here. We and remind our libraries, anyone out there, uh, we are still right in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And on our Library Commission website, we do have some resources that we have up there for available for uh, libraries and people in Nebraska. Um, there is a post, there's a link here right at the top that is our list of libraries, closings, reopenings, et cetera, um, that we try to keep up with as well as we can. We do have a web form library and libraries can fill out to let us know, are they open, are they closed, are they partially, are they um, doing curbside, um, have they reclosed? Many libraries and, or, and businesses are reclosing now because they opened up too soon, flare up of the, um, of the virus and they have to shut down again. Um, so we do try to keep um, track of that for our Nebraska libraries. Uh, if you're, so check on your library on here, make sure the info is correct. If it's not, shoot us an email and we can update it. Uh, we also post here uh, COVID-19 and pandemic resources. This is pinned to the top of our website, so it'll always be there at the top of everything else that comes in our blog. And this we have there we go, uh, links to the form to submit to us, uh, link, uh, there's some maps of what libraries are doing put together too. Um, but we, here we also have a page with some sub information, depending on other things you might want to know about my business, my kids, um, financial help, unemployment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we, but then there is a, so there's a lot of things there that could be um, useful to you when you're helping your patrons. But we do have one about what about my library? And this is specifically information for libraries as they're opening, um, talking about reopening, closing, whatever. Uh, so webinars, information from the CDC, World Health Organization, ALA, OCLC, IMLS, pick your acronym, <laughs> anything that comes up that we hear about, we add here. So we're always adding things onto here. Um, so keep that on this page uh, for any resources and information that might be helpful to you. Uh, some of this information is from outside, you know, is, is good for anyone. Some of it is specific to Nebraska. For example, the information here about holding meetings, that's Nebraska specific. If you're not in Nebraska, you're welcome to look at these resources and use them, but double check with your state library or your state library association. They may be um, providing the same kind of information for you with local information. So I just like to highlight that whenever we start the show here so everyone knows we're still pushing out that information for you during this pandemic. Now you should go back there and go to the what a copyright one. Since I'm here, I'm. Oh, yeah. on the library one? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, down at the bottom, the last one. What about copyright for books online? Oh, right now? that's. Mm -hmm. And we have what we know about those publishers that aren't covered. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look in the middle section, online story times, et cetera, mm -hmm. right here. There's. Um, and some of the publishers have extended the yes, that's availability right. to do I it. Yes. I was trying to find the one about the School Library Journal had a list mm -hmm. of extended. Um, till the end of December. So mm -hmm. again, this doesn't cover everybody, but it sure lets you know who has made a statement and what they want you to do. They might mm -hmm. want you to send them some information just so they know who's doing what. They mm -hmm. don't want you to pay anything. And they, if you put it online, according to their permissions, they want you to take it down by a particular time. Mm -hmm. So that's true too. You need yeah. to pay attention to that. Thanks for letting me jump in. Yeah, no, that. no problem. No, this is important because this is one of the, one of the big things that a lot of libraries are 
concerned about something they've done forever. Um, how do we do it now? Is it legal? And because of the situation we're in right now with being in the pandemic, many, uh, most I would say, I'm going to be optimistic, publishers have said, yes, of course, use it, but with these limitations. Um, sometimes it's take it down, sometimes it's don't record it though, just live. You know, so double check and see you know, what the situation is, depending on what you might want to do or what you want to use. Yes. Which book, which publisher. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So um, I will mention before we get started today's show, if you do have any questions, comments, thoughts, you can use your GoToWebinar interface. There's a question section there you can open up and type into. Or um, if you type into there, you want to use, you can also use your own microphone if you want to ask a question, just type into there, I have a mic, please unmute me, and we can do that, and you can ask your question that way. Um, I'm going to ask you, Holly, you're Sally. I am. <laughs> to, um, you or Holly, both of you guys, can you open up the question, watch for questions, because the screen's way far away from me, I can't really read it very well. Interestingly, I don't have questions on there right now. Um, oh, oh, wait, I can fix this. Oh, I know why. Yeah. I got it. Give me just a second here. And hopefully nobody can hear that grinding. We hope not. I think they certainly would have heard it if we were in our offices. Yes. Oh, now I have questions. There we go. All right, Holly and Sally, I've given you both the ability. You should now be able to open up that questions box and monitor for us. Because I do not, I can, the way we're jury rigging things here today, I really can't read very well when those come in. Yes, we have a, a differently yeah. position. So, but if you guys keep an eye on that, then I think we'll be good. We'll do it. All right. So today, now we'll get into actual today's show. We are going to be talking about grants, uh, NLC grants for 2021. Um, and I'm going to start just over here on our website. Um, here at the Library Commission, we provide you with information about lots of grants that are available out there, but we also offer some of our own. And today what we're going to talk about mostly is the new grants we are offering for 2021. So these are all grants you'll be applying for now, and then you'll receive the funding for projects or events or whatever you're doing um, in next year, in 2021. We have over here on, um, I know we should, On our website here, we have a flyout menu here with things with a section about grants, funding, and E-rate. And over here is the NLC related grants. This is what we're going to be talking about. Um, there's a main page here about the grants, and then there's lots of different grants listed here. Some of these are things that we offer, and then this list, but some are things that we um, are doing for you. It's yes. not coming, it's not the most we're talking about today. For example, the CARES Act grants, we did do those. They closed, the libraries are receiving their funding now, but it's related to what we do here. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about here are the ones on this main page here about NLC grants. Um, there are four different grants that we sometimes, I'll say, give out here via through the Nebraska Library Commission. Right now, we know three of the four are definitely being offered for 2021. This is um, funding that we have state funds, state um, from the state legislature that we get money to do various things at the commission. And we have funding for three of the grants. Um, one grant we are unsure about yet because it comes with, uh, um, federal funding is used to do that grant and we do not know yet what the federal budget is going to be. Um, that's still an unknown. Uh, so you'll see on here, the four grants that are listed and um, the ones that do have dates of when they are open, you'll see this 2020 dates, 2020 dates, and this right here, library improvement grants, that's the one that we don't know yet. That's why it still has the previous year's dates when it was for 2020. Um, if you go to that grants page, I'll just show you quickly, you'll see the big red blob, blob just the top there, the big bar that says the grants for 2020 are done, and we're not sure what will be happening in 2021. Keep an eye on this. Um, so yeah, keep your eye open for what will happen with library improvement grants. These are grants generally for doing things like um, services, uh, sometimes construction, not full on construction, but like uh, updating your AV in a room you have, getting a webcam, getting a 3D printer, things that are just general things for your library that they might want um, to do to, to have um, services, products. You can look through the information there if you want to um, and, and see what it was about last year. 
But like I said, until we know what our budget will be from uh, federal LSTA funding, we don't know yet if they will be available or how much. So keep an eye on that. The other three grants, however, yes, we are good to go with those. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll do them in the order that they are uh, going to be due. Oh, because you know, we'll talk with them when, when um, you see, we do have, yeah. So that would mean we would start with Sally in Yay. the youth grants. <laughs> it's coming right up. Yeah. And I didn't introduce, so um, we have the four different grants here. And there's the reason the three of us are here. Um, I'm the library development director and I handle the internship grants. Um, and then the other two are handing out Sally and Holly. I'll let you guys introduce yourself and then talk about your various grants. So if you should I, I can hand over control to you. If sure. You have. All right. I'm ready. I'm gonna get Sally's screen up. Um, a presenter. Yes. Okay. And you should see a show my button. screen. How about that? There, there it are. is. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so I'm going to keep an eye on the time. Um, the youth grants, as she said, they're they're coming. Introduce up. yourself first, Sue. So oh yes, sorry. Right. I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the youth services coordinator. That's the short title. <laughs> My official title is longer. That's right. But I work with um, librarians who work with kids from birth to past a little past age 18, and that can be a library director because sometimes library directors are the librarian for okay. everybody, mm -hmm. and that's great. And sometimes they have a children's or teen librarian in their library. So mm -hmm. if they're lucky. Yes. Yes, if they're lucky. It's a good thing. So I'm just going to go through on the web page a little bit about writing up an application for a grant and what we're hoping you're going to be doing and what you might have questions about. And we'll get going on there. Okay, get a move on. We can either look at it through the for the youth grants, you can stop at children YA and whoops, scooch over here and right at the bottom there, because it starts with a Y, it's always at the bottom. It's alphabetic. Grants. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or it was also on the list that Krista mm -hmm. talked about. This is good though. You see, there's various ways to get to things. We also do have, you'll notice in the upper right, there's a search yes. just for our entire yes. income, uh, the library commission website. Type grants in there or youth grants or internship grants, whatever kind you're looking for, and you should be able to come up with the uh, links to this place, the right pages as well. So when you click on that, you come to what I call the introduction page. It tells you a little bit about what are these, um, who's eligible, when are they due, uh, things like that. And as you look along here, you'll see that um, right like the second paragraph, it says, if you have some questions, go check our FAQ because it, it um, so the introduction sends you to the FAQ a few times. So instead of having lots of text in lots of places, we have, the text here and then you just get sent here if you have a question about matching funds which is a question i get every year and mm -hmm. i understand why so some of our grants do require match some do not so True. you're going to have to definitely pay attention to each grant and what information um what the requirements are for each one of them so now i want to go back to the introduction page and <clears throat> there's good information here because i wrote it i know it's good <laughs> But um, oops. let's see. I have to. I have to get over here yeah, so I can get that tab. The, the, the she got me now. That's just pretty. So, who's eligible? Accredited public libraries in Nebraska are eligible. Mm -hmm. Now, along with that is. Um, a ch I'm going to pop back to the FAQ because I didn't realize it was this close. Down here is a little bit more information. Who is eligible? So it says, oh gosh, this is exciting stuff. Accredited public, I have to get this out of my way now. Heat sick. Accredits, and then the second par chap in this paragraph, the second sentence says schools, unaccredited public libraries, and some other organizations may be involved through collaborative planning and programming mm -hmm. with an eligible public library. Right. So if you're an accredited public library and the next town over has an unaccredited library and you guys want to work together on a project, that's great. And we encourage that. And one of the things, we'll go through the grant form in a minute, but one of the things I 
my rule, and I don't know if it's just me or if we all would say this, if you're buying, if you're if you're um, partnering with an unaccredited library, for example, and you're going to be buying some items, at least 51% of the tangible items need to reside in the accredited public library, which means 49% can reside in the unaccredited library. So if you're buying if you're doing a project and you want to buy some books for the kids to refer to that has to do with that project, you need to put them that way. Um, my example is going to be, um, because this is what I did last year, so I have my numbers right here, that you maybe want to buy a couple of gaming systems. And in that case, if you're sharing with another library, um, one of the systems could reside, officially reside in each library plus the particular games figuring out the 51%. But on occasion, if the unaccredited library is having a gaming party, because someday we hope that'll happen again, sure. they can have both of them there for that gaming party and party and all the games you bought, so <clears> then <throat> that can work well. And then when their event is over, it would go back to the original library. So, so like during an, a project potentially or something like right. that, it's okay for things, if, if that's the kind of equipment or things you're buying, everything can be at one library for a time. but officially and legally the accredited library owns right more of the stuff we'll call it than the unaccredited just because they are the we would consider the, the primary applicant um to the grants and all of our grants do are um i think yeah yes all of these grants are this have the same rules of being accredited public libraries and um the state-run institutions institutional libraries are eligible for the grants that we have and i don't one of the pages here of yours has a link to the list of those state-run institutions mm -hmm. the youth rehab centers things like that um <clears throat> the corrections are the ones that are the ones that are eligible for all these grants that we're talking about today um but all of them we do encourage um collaboration yeah do a group group project with um some other organization if your historical society wants to do some sort of thing with the library that'd be great have them come on as enough as you know enough. we've done that with um the nyhart center up in um bancroft the library applied and they did a lot of events and things with the center and they were together they were um co-applicants of, uh, of the grant and um it was great yeah so think creatively if you do have things like that or organizations you could work with to do some sort of project or program or something for all of these grants and if you do that you'll need to have a letter a lot i mean they'll be part of the extra materials you send in but a letter from that organization or that other library saying yes we want to be involved in this project and mm -hmm. we're looking forward to partnering with whoever so that we know yes you've checked with these this group or this <laughs> library and you're planning together for something because you know, it's happening yeah we don't want to surprise them surprise you have to do this i don't want to oh <laughs> sorry who would say no i can't <laughs> okay i gotta move on so back to the original introduction i'm going to zoom down to the bottom of the page Again, there's lots of information here. If you have questions, though, you are welcome to call me. Any oh, mm -hmm. I do want to point out, right here are exemplary sample applications. These are applications from past uh, years who received a youth grant and are considered exemplary because of how much information they included. Yay! Mm -hmm. That makes a big difference. So you can take a look mm -hmm. at those just to see what you might want to to emulate in your own application. Down here we have the online forms. There's a short form. If you're asking for a thousand dollars grant from us or less, use the short form. If you're asking for more than a thousand, and I don't think anyone's ever going to ask for a thousand and one dollars because then you have to do the long form. <laughs> and what's why that extra dollar? <laughs> but if you're asking for, for a fifteen hundred dollar grant, for example then you'll need to do the long form. It just has a little bit more information in it that we want from you. So we're going to go to the short form. And this is what it looks like. Of course, I have information at the beginning because I want you to know stuff. Sure. So you fill this out, who you are, if you're the library director or the children's librarian or a board member. A board member can fill this out mm -hmm. if they want to. And we have a place for a project title. It doesn't have to be snazzy if you want it yeah just if you want it snazzy go for it <laughs> and then this is kind of this tri trips some people up um that we used to have more categories and really we don't but i'm just mm -hmm. kind of asking you here 
are you having a celebration of reading? Are you doing a teen project for teens to learn how to code? So if it's a little more specific, you can put that in there. But that's just, again, just some general information. Down below that part, do you have any goals? Hope you have one. You don't need to have 12, you can have one, and that's great. So what's your goal here? Is it for the kids to learn to code? Okay. Is it for um, kids to have a good time at the library and have good feelings about the library so they'll want to come back? That's not phrased in goal-oriented phrasing, but if that's what you have in mind, you can write it that way. And just so you know, these boxes will expand if you need them to. And we do recommend strongly that you look through here, figure out what you need to tell us, and then write it in a different program. Write it in a word in processing word program in Word if you have it, or even um, Notepad. Because once you get in here and you type things in, if you have to turn it off for some reason or leave because someone wants to use it for something else, everything is lost. It does not save it. and You can't come back where you left off. It, it's uh, Someday maybe that'll change, we hope, but in the meantime, so write it in another place, and then you'll just copy and paste copy it in. in. Yeah, yeah. Would, that would count for all the grants. Yep, they're yeah. all the, all, they're all the same way on the, yeah. our website. So. They look very similar. <laughs> so number three, description of program or activities. Here's where the meat of your project goes. And if you tell me, I'm going to do three programs this summer, and that's all you say, you're not up there very high on my list. I like you. I think libraries are great, but you got to tell me more than that. And you're not tied to it. I think that's one thing that makes people hesitant. Yes. If you go in there and say one, one program is going to be coding, one program is going to be making buttons with our new button maker that we're going to buy, and one's going to be a, a Mario Kart tournament, and then you get funded, and then you find out that something something went wrong and, and you have to change things, just email me and say, well, instead of the coding program, our coding person couldn't make it, we're going to do something else for that same age group. Mm -hmm. And highly likely I'll say, okay, go for it. Yeah, all of these grants, are, most of them, depending on what you're doing, are not set in stone. You can always reach out to any of us and say, yeah, something changed. Obviously, we all know this year, grants were awarded and um, then the pandemic flared up and everything is different. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's okay. Um, we did uh, continuing education grants were to attend this year, the um, Association for Rural and Small Libraries Conference that was gonna be in Wichita, Kansas. Easy drive right down the road. Well, that's no longer happening that way. It's gone virtual. So we switch gears. Everyone who applied for that can just do it virtually and get their grant that way. Um, so things can change. They'll change sometimes coming from us saying, because the events changed, we're allowing you to do something different with your grant, but can also come um, and from you guys as well saying, hey, something changed on our end and we have to um, change this what we want to do. And that's okay. Just let us know. Keep us in the loop. Keep us um, I think there's even wording somewhere on some of the agreements that states any changes you must keep in, you know, report right. and let us know. But just, to, yeah, just um, Sally for the youth ones, me for the internship, Holly for the, um, the CE ones, just let us know what's happening. So also in here, the youth grants have a requirement that you have to have some kind of a program connected with the grant, which in the past has usually meant, well, we got this new stuff, we're going to have an open house and everybody gets to play with all the new stuff we got. Well, you're not going to be doing that in the near future, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, please don't. But there are other ways to have a program. Mm -hmm. So I just jotted down a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Virtual is okay. Say you want to get a speaker to present to the kids about space and whatever, because that's your project. That virtual program is a program. Mm -hmm. I had a person call me the other day and said what they wanted to do, they're writing an application and I don't find my note yet, so I can't remember who it is. But they wanted to, what they were going to do was send a packet home with the kids. Mm -hmm. They were going to make something at home and then the kids are going to bring it back to the library where the librarian would take a picture of it. And then the kid got to keep their thing and the pictures will go up on the webpage. That is a program. Yes, that counts. You can and a lot that. of these things, I think this past year, 
libraries have switched gears yes. into figuring out ways to do these. I've seen a lot sure. of take and make um, right. um, uh, craft programs. They put together bags of come to the library, pick it up, do it at home. Or they put up a video of here is the craft that you can do in here. I'm going to demo doing it, but people just do it at home. Yes. Um, and that's a program. Yeah, all those things that you switch gears into this past year, you can still keep doing that next year and do it, um, apply for a grant for them. Yeah. Another option that I'm allowing this year, and you'll probably think I'm crazy, <laughs> but I, you can also say you're going to hold an in-person program when the pandemic is passed enough that everybody feels safe for that. Sure. And that doesn't necessarily mean by the end of summer next year. That might be in the further along in the future, we don't know. But that if you put that in your plan and then you say you're going to do it, and I believe that you will eventually do it, mm -hmm. then we're, we're okay on that. And the thing about what's going on now with, with COVID-19 mm -hmm. is, and I know this because I've been in meetings with librarians across the state, it's flaring up in different places. So in one community, yes. it may be, we're having hardly, you know, we've done really well. Uh, things are very safe, much safer here. We can have more people come in the library. But another community down the road, sorry, things are flaring up because of some event or something, so we can't. And that's fine. It's going to change day to day. It's going to change over time, depending on where you are. There's no hard and fast rules that all your programs have to be virtual or outside. That's another thing a lot of that's people do. Now before. that we're getting going to get into fall, fall, okay, but winter, probably not a lot of outside programs unless you're really <laughs> into really snow. Cool, man. Yeah. But um, a lot of these just moved everything outside, story time outside, whatever. So there's more space for the and everything, and that's great. Um, but it's going to vary from town to town and from time to time, and that's okay. Whatever is safe in your community that you're doing, that's okay. Um, and I think across the board for all of these grants, I'm going to say, and it's not. Up there listed but it's something everyone needs to be aware of make sure when you're applying for these grants that you are taking that into the, the virus the pandemic into consideration with your projects and in your grant applications somewhere in there address the fact that yes i know we usually do a summer reading every year and it's always this don't just submit the same application you did last year because if you don't address and take into consideration the fact that it could be dangerous to do that same program that's Gonna, there's going to be a discussion <laughs> with Holly, with uh, Sally, um, with me about the internship grants. Don't just submit this thing. And we have a lot of libraries that do interns every year, and that's great. And we'd love to submit um, to um, provide the salary for them. But you can't just submit the same old application that you did last year and the year before to me and not address the fact that actually this person might not be able to do the same thing we've always had an internship intern do. You're going to have to switch gears and come up with different things for them to do or a different way for them to do it. But make sure you address that in your application that I know that you know, things are going to have to be different and that's okay. And if you didn't, I know some applications already come in, that's okay. I'll be reaching out to you and asking questions. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a discussion. There is no, we've read your application and it's a no. <laughs> there is. We're going to read all these applications and we may be calling you in contact with questions and want more explanation. We give you a chance to um, the, add on to it, just send an addendum or just you know, clarify what you're doing in an email to us. That's It's all back and forth. Yeah. Thank you. So number four is just tell me the mm -hmm. date you're planning on beginning your project and when you think it will be done. If you have an end date, some things are ongoing. We are always going to have coding class. Mm -hmm. That's great. Say so. The targeted number of youth who will be impacted by this project. This is the number of, of children or teens that you think will be coming in the library and be, or, or picking up the packets and being involved. This is an estimate. If you're hoping for 25 kids to be involved, put in 25. There might be more, there might be less. There's no big, um, this isn't the, the little question that's gonna catch you and get a no. We don't have any questions that are gonna catch you and get a no. Well, I'm just going to joke about one, but never mind. Okay, so um, impact is just, on this one, we just say impact. On the longer one, we say the word evaluation, and this is what we mean. What, what are you hoping to get from having this project? And here's the one I was going to joke about, number seven. If awarded a grant, I would be willing, if asked, to make a presentation about mm -hmm. it and how it went. And I've had people mark no. Mm -hmm. They still got a grant. That's okay. This would generally be yeah. come here on Encompass Live and right. talk about your project, or depending on how our uh, state library conferences go, or our uh, spring meetings, or things like that, presenting at one of those potentially. Yeah. We might ask you to stand up at lunch and say, give a three-minute talk about we got we received this grant, we did this project, this is our our result, mm -hmm. and it can so yeah. we you know we don't Something have that short yeah. yeah. 
So I'm just going to do a quick look at the application. As you look at this, we tried really hard to make things clear and understandable. And I do want to point out that it says round figures to the nearest full dollar amount over there. So I'm doing my gaming system. So I want, um, that's probably under equipment. So I'm going to put in $600 because I have no idea what they cost for mm -hmm. two systems, I'm going to say. And along with that, I think I'll put in, I guess under library materials, $200 for games because it's not good to have a system without a game mm -hmm. or three. And also, I my library down the road, they got a button maker and the kids have been having, the teens have been having a great time with that. So I think we should try that. So I looked up a button maker and I think it was $150. Yes, it was. So yeah. I'm going to put that under equipment too. So now I'm at $750 instead of, where's delete? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's not a delete. 750 dollars. Now look there under estimated total project. Well, maybe you can't see it on the screen there. Yeah. Oh, okay. The bottom there. Yeah. See how it's changing? Mm -hmm. Well, along with that, I'm going to buy some button maker additional supplies. The button maker comes with some supplies, but I looked up and the I'm going to under program materials. I'm going to put in $24 because I'm going to buy another couple of sets of button making equipment. So that gets me. What did I do wrong? Oh, I haven't, haven't moved. Once you move, see after I moved off of that one, now at the bottom it says 974. So right now, because that's what I want to do, my total project is 974. Now, what can trip you up is that the local match needs to be 25% of whatever you're asking from the library commission. So from the library commission, because I did the math and I know how to do this tricky, mm -hmm. just call me, I'll help you. The grant should be 779, you want $779 from me. So you are using the correct form. And the local match, because your um, friends of the library said, yeah, we're gonna give you the money for the local match for this. So we're gonna give you one, where, where did I go? Should be right in here. There we go. $195. And that should show up there. And those two numbers add up to 974. And the 195 is 25% of the 779. Now, if you try to, if you if you have your numbers aren't right and you go down a little bit to fill in another thing, it's gonna say, whoa, this isn't right. That's when you call me on the phone and say, Sally, my numbers, I don't know what I did. There is a check. That's good. Yeah. It will, it will tell you that. And I am happy to help you. An important thing also to remember, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get done here pretty soon, is that up here where you see these different categories, down below where you put your numbers in, we have a space for you to tell us something about it. So I don't have any contracted services. My library materials are button, whoops. Whoops, well, I'm typing button making supplies. Now, I could be more specific and say I'm getting 50 uh, buttons that I'm going mm -hmm. to use in my machine. <clears throat> the more yeah. you tell me here, I, it doesn't have to be long, but a little bit more than button making supplies would be enjoyed. Um, personnel costs are for if you hire someone to do, is that right? Yeah, paying any person who is on the payroll. Contracted services are paying any person not on the payroll. So up at the top. From outside the library, you had to the, bring in to do yeah, something. Yeah. Bring in a, a presenter or something. The personnel costs are considered an in-kind match, but if you need, so that can be 15% of the total grand amount, and 10% needs to be cash. And in that case, you just tell me the children's librarian worked 10 hours on this project for X amount of dollars. So that's our local in-kind match. <clears throat> and then, so there's program materials. Oh, I put the, I put my money, I put my button making stuff in the wrong thing. I'm going to, going to go on down to equipment. Here is where you say one 
Nintendo Switch. Is that still what I should say? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's still a thing, yes. Good. See, I don't know anything. Switch and one PlayStation something. Is there a PlayStation mm -hmm. still? See what Depends. I know. I would say they don't want a five because you probably can get one. Oh. They just came out with us. Four. It's okay. okay. Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> now I know. If you put in there two gaming systems, that's information. But I already know that kind of because of your explanation earlier, we're gonna have gaming parties. So tell me what, what you're planning to get. Again, if things change, if you find out Nintendo Switch is fell apart mm -hmm. and I don't want one anymore, I want PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5, mm -hmm. I guess that'd be okay. Yeah, by next year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so um, give us a little bit of information in here. You can even tell us that Nintendo Switch is $300 and the PlayStation 4 mm -hmm. is $295 if you, if you know that, yeah. But don't cheat yourself. Just because somebody's having a sale on something doesn't mean by the time you get the grant and you actually get the funding that that's still going to be the price. So mm -hmm. look at look at what the yeah. standard price is and, and go for that. Okay, so in here we want information. And there's always a place for other. Now you're feeling pretty good about your application. This is misleading because it says save and submit. And really it, it doesn't save so you can come back to use it again like we said before. What it does is it it you means it. you're done and it sends you a copy <laughs> and it sends us a copy. And if you do that, hit the save and send button and then go, oh no, I forgot something or other. You have choices. You can go in and do it all again and do it with the other thing in there. Cause I will take the last one you've sent. Oh, so you can submit a second you application. Can, you can submit you the want. same application, but but adjust Fix. things or add things or whatever you forgot. Mm, that's okay. Or you can send me an email saying, I did all of this and that's all right, but I forgot about my local match of this amount for whatever. Mm -hmm. Send me an email. I add it to the pile. So mm -hmm. don't don't <clears throat> panic. That's what I want to say. And I guess I better quit now. And then don't forget the signature page. Oh, that was it. Yes. There it is right there. Please print, sign, and send the signature page. That can that does not have to come by the deadline. It can come the week after. See how it says, are you sure you want to leave? Can you put all this stuff in here? So you get a chance to go, oh, yeah, she told me not to leave. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the signature page. You can just print this off. The project director could be the children's librarian. It could be the library director. It could be the board president. So whoever's actually doing the project wrote the application, signs there. If it's not the library director, we want the library director to sign just so they know that someone sent in an application and also a signature of the board president. And if your board president's out of town for a week, it's okay. We know that people aren't always right where you need them when you want something mm -hmm. signed. Yeah, so as you send in your supporting information, this would be one supporting information. After you get the signatures, you can scan it and email it to me. Mm -hmm. Or you can put it in an envelope along with maybe you printed off pages off of uh, Google. Here's the things I want to buy. And and then I we can see a little mm -hmm. bit more about what you want. Mm -hmm. And you can mail that again in the in a, the US mail or scan and send it. Mm -hmm. So I better quit now. I don't even know if I had any questions. I don't, I don't know. I don't um, see any. See anything? Okay. And again, please call me if you have questions. If I if I ran talk too fast over something, can you missed it? Give me a call or send me an email. All right, I am going to bring back presenter control to my screen now. Hopefully, is it showing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I said we're going to do these in the order that they are due, and um, we didn't actually mention that <clears throat> in much detail, but um, on this page you can see the dates. The youth grants, all of our grants are open now. Um, youth grants are due October 7th, October, and then the internships grants are due in November, and the CE grants are going to be due in December, so one each month. Um, 
So you have time in between each of them. So if you if you're applying for all three, that's great. You you can do that. <laughs> um, Catch you your can, breath. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have a little time between each one when each of them is due, so you can you know just do the first one, do the youth grant one, and then we're thinking about the internship, and then think about the CE. So I'm going to talk about the internship grants here, um, and now I'll try to go as quick as I can. As um, as you know, we did start a little late to get things set up, so we probably will run a little after 11 o'clock to get through everything here. Don't worry about it if you have to take um, walk away because or you know leave the show right now, uh, leave the webinar because you only allotted a certain amount of time to watch it. That's fine. We're recording everything, and you'll be able to watch anything you missed um, later. <clears throat> so internship grants um, will pop you over to a whole different looking page. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, is our now hiring at your library website. This is a special website we have set up for things like internship grants, and getting jobs, and going to library school, and all those um, anything related to that. Um, the internships are for you to hire um, extra staff at your library, basically. Um, the idea is it would be a student, a college or high school student, who hopefully is interested maybe in becoming, going into library school, becoming, a, you know, going into librarianship. Um, that's not a rule, you know, if they don't decide to go into it, you don't get in trouble afterwards. <laughs> but the idea is there's somebody who you know is interested in either becoming a librarian or is just interested in um, working at the library and helping the library, you know, do whatever they are doing. So it does need to be a college or high school student. Um, we will give um, $1,000 per library. And you can split that up between two internships, uh, two interns if you like. Um, so you have one person that you could pay $1,000 to, or two people you'd pay $500 each, um, or whatever the breakup needs, needs to be. Uh, but you definitely want to make it worthwhile to them. So um, just one or two interns you can have. Um, these are due November 10th. And the idea is to give them an idea of what it's like working in a library. Um, some of the, we've got some examples here of uh, a schedule what they will do. Um, some libraries they just give them a taste of everything you do at the library for you know a few weeks at um, time at each one. They work with circulation, they work with cataloging, they work with summer reading, and they bounce around everything, and that's okay. Sometimes there's just one specific project they're involved in. They are our special summer reading um, assistant, or we're doing like I said a a special project with a local history organization, and they're going to work all on that. That's okay too. Um, but the idea is, you know, make sure, you know, show them what it's like working in a library, get them excited about working in a library and becoming a librarian themselves, hopefully. Um, we have had success where some have, uh, but it doesn't have to be me. That's okay. <laughs> they can go on and do something else in their career if they want to. Um, they might come back to libraries later. You never know. Yes, yeah, some people have, yeah. Um, let's see, we do have here the same thing as, as I mentioned before, the accredited public libraries and um, can apply for this. Uh, you can do partnerships, highly encourage that, of course. Um, we do have information here about as well um, the hours that they want you need, need to pay attention to how many hours they're going to work if the intern is underage. Um, I think it's under age 16. There are certain rules about what you need to do for hiring um, um, interns who are minors. I have links to information on that, so you just have to pay attention to what those rules are about how much they can be paid or should be paid, <clears throat> what hours they should can work and can't work, and we have links to all that information. So um, you do stay on the legal side of things here in Nebraska. Um, and yeah, here's that information about the Nebraska Department of Labor has a form you have to submit if you are going to be hiring someone who is um, under um, a minor as well. So there's all those different rules there just to pay attention to. Uh, something else to take uh, to keep in mind is uh, when you're paying them, how are they going to be paid? You can do this either as a, um, a uh, oh, hourly wage as if they're just another employee so you go through the same process with hiring this intern as if they were any other any staff person you're hiring so your HR people your city whoever does the hiring will do that and then as far as taxes go because you do have to pay your, in, your income tax it all does go that does affect this is, is related to this they will then pull out all those FICA taxes and everything just in the way they do as any other employees submit the correct forms and then your intern will submit their correct forms um, to the IRS when they do their taxes um, the next year. Um, or if you want to, you can do it as a stipend to them where you don't do, all, you do not at the library <coughs> or at the city pull out all of the taxes. You just pay the intern all of the money, the whole 500 or whole thousand, whatever you're paying them. And then they are responsible for making sure that they submit the correct forms to the um, IRS 
IRS about the fact that you know some of this actually has to be kind of held back to pay cover their taxes that they are, they owe. So um, you have that choice whichever way you want to do it, whichever way is easiest for you at your in your city or whoever does your um, payroll or um, depending on who it is you're working with, you, who the intern is, what they might prefer. Some of them may prefer to do it as a stipend and just handle it themselves. Um, it's you know, I'll, I'll totally up to you which way you would like to do that. Um, we're flexible. <laughs> Um, let's see here. We do have for the uh, internship grant application a PDF version of the form that you can look at ahead of time just to give yourself so you know what kind of things you might be. And this goes along with what Sally was saying about doing a uh, you're typing up your, your application information somewhere else first and then copying and pasting it in. So um, you can look at this it's a PDF, you can print it out, type in, write out whatever you want. It just gives you an idea ahead of time of, oh, this is what I'm going to be needing to know before I do complete the actual application itself. Um, this form does also have a signature page, same thing as uh, the ones. This one pops up as a PDF that you can print out and then sign, scan an email in to me, or um, mail it, whichever works for you. And then we do have some more extra information here about how to, you know, just help you with uh, going through and having an intern. Um, a proposed schedule of what they could do. Now this is covering if they do um, all the different, you know, try out all the different things in the library. It doesn't have to be this, but um, schedule how you're going to do things and when you're going to do things, uh, what kind of programs and things they'll go into. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is just you know an example of what you could do. That out. Yeah. Uh, an orientation to them, getting them acclimated to what how it is um, working in a library. Example of that, and then uh, this is something specifically that's from the state an employee guidebook to developing a successful and successful internship program. Uh, this is something that it just you know in internships in general. A lot of this may not apply to what you're doing in your library, but it can be some good tips. We just give you some examples. All these are examples. You do not have to follow these all word by word, by word for word. They just give you an idea of how you could do things. Um, the application itself, just like all the ones we have here, is online. Just fill in all the blanks here in this form. Um, basic information, uh, how much you're doing, are you going to be doing a high school or college student, one or two interns, and then just an explanation of what you're going to have them do. Um, the idea of this, and it's the same thing I think with Sally's and um, what Holly's going to talk about too, is we want to make sure, let's like, don't make it too short, not just a one line. We need assistance with summer reading. You okay? What exactly do you mean by that? We need to know that you've actually thought about this, that you're not just saying, oh, I just want an extra staff person to help out. Well, that's great. We all do, but we want you to know that you sat down and thought this through and said this is what they'll actually do. Um, we've planned and thought and, and really thought it through and have a really good idea of a project or something that they can do. So, you know, make it worth our time to read and just, you know, describe out what you're going to have them do. Make, you know, be as detailed as you can. Um, we have our submit here when you're done with it. Um, if there's fields that aren't entered in here that are required, it'll let you know. And there's another link here to do that signature page too. So all of these applications are very similar. You do the online version of it all and then you follow up with that signature page. Um, as Sally said, it doesn't have to be right away. Do the signature when you, you know, can't do it. But you know, if you do it when you're working on the form, you don't forget. Um, if you do forget, we will nudge you and let you know. <laughs> it gets to the deadline for the grant, and we've gotten your online application. If we don't have that signature page yet, you will get an email from whichever one of us the grant is for saying, hey, we still need this actual official signing of your name for this you know, the application to be actually officially submitted. And if I go back, it's going to say, you sure you want to leave? Yes, I um, As I mentioned, make sure, especially the internships, grants that you are taking into consideration, whatever these people are going to be doing when you're you know, working on these um, timelines or orientation plans or whatever, taking consideration of what may be going on next year with um, COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, we actually had this year for 2020, about half of our internship grants that we awarded were on the libraries were unable to actually hire anybody and were unable to have their intern do anything for the program. The library was closed down completely. Um, just nobody applied because everything else going on. 
um, particular programs would, couldn't happen because it was going on with the pandemic. What we have done for those libraries is we are letting them use that grant, that internship next year in 2021. So um, we, we don't, you know, you don't just lose it because, oh, well, we weren't able to do it. Never mind. We let everyone just keep that funding and then next year they can now have their intern. And hopefully now that we've figured out how to work in um, the pandemic and know this is the kind of program I can do and now I can use a person next year to do this, you know, modified version of it. That's great. Hopefully all these libraries will be able to do that. Um, but it's about half of our libraries were unable to actually even hire anybody this past year. And you know, that's okay. And he said, none of this is in stone. It's okay if things change. Um, and you need to bump things to a later date. That is all totally acceptable. Um, it's also acceptable. We've done it for a couple. Um, it just wasn't going to happen. And they just want to return the funding. And that's okay, too. Um, it's not, you know, he gets in trouble <laughs> for anything like that. We know situations change. So that is the basics of the internship rate. Um, any questions about that? Do any questions popping in? Not in there for that. Okay. All right. They're going to call you later. Though. That's right. <laughs> you. Call me, ask me if you have any questions, you want to know about it. The deadline for the internship grants is it was November 10th. Yeah. So you've got plenty of time for that one. Do your youth ones first, then do your internship, and next do your CE. All right, Holly, I'm going to give you presenter control now. You should see that pop up so you can get your screen. See it? There you are. Yep, perfect. Cool. So. And I hope I should ask Holly, can you, tell, can you hear any of that beeping and grinding and stuff that's going on here? Uh, a little bit, a little but bit. <laughs> it's, I think at least it's, to me, it's not too bad, but. Yeah, I think it's behind us downstairs, so it's, it's <laughs> um, Oops, there we go. Okay, so the CE grants, this last year we focused on um, ARSL conference, which is next week. And if you still want to attend, registration is still open. Um, obviously, we're not going to do any more grants for it, but if you do want to register, it's still open. Um, but for this next round of grants, we are opening it up to really anything. Uh, um, so if you go again to the grants, over here, continuing education grants, that'll bring you to this page. Scroll down a little bit for the grant information. So we are, there's three different areas that we're focusing on. Um, let's see, we have online learning, conferences and workshops, and then these bigger CE projects. So these first two, the online learning and conferences or workshops, these are intended for individual applications. And then the CE projects are for much larger uh, training groups. Um, so this first one, the online learning, these are if you want to take an online class of some kind, um, for example, through Library Juice, um, ALA has a whole bunch of different classes or info people. Um, you can take other classes if through your application you can demonstrate how it's re like related to either your job or an issue in librarianship um, and that it's through a recognized provider of online CE. Um, for example, somebody, when we did this in 2018, somebody took a grant writing class um, and she said it was so it was really helpful. Um, I don't remember where it was from. Uh, but these classes don't, oops, sorry, I just zoomed out. Um, so classes that don't count would be anything offered through like NLA or the Library Commission, or if you're taking a class for an academic class for credit, those wouldn't um, be covered. Um, just like the other application or the other grants, um, you must be either an empl employed in a, an accredited public library or you can be um, a current board member. 
Um, so then same thing with the conferences and workshops. This would be to um, attend either virtually or in person. Um, and again, if there's a work or a conference, maybe at the end of next year that you want to attend and they're tentatively um, scheduling it in person, um, you can apply for it, apply for you know, the travel and lodging and make your plans. But if they decide, no, we need to cancel it or go virtual, that's fine. It's just what happened this year with ARSL. It was in person. We had the first round of grants. Um, and then they switched to virtual. And that's fine. Those, you know, those first round of grants still got to attend virtually. It just, we had to shift plans and that happens and that's fine. Um, these conferences, again, they should be library conferences or in the application if you can demonstrate how it would be directly related to your job or an issue. Um, and it should be outside of Nebraska. We want to just encourage you to look at different uh, training opportunities than um, you might look at normally. Um, I don't remember where ASR, ARSL is going to be next year. Probably virtual. Who knows? I don't um, know. I'm sorry. No, I don't know either. I'm not sure. Yeah. Where they're next. <laughs> It's in the United States. Well, that is in the Yeah. States. So again, um, and it, so ARSL may be a bad example because their conference is next week. Um, but if there is a conference, pretend like it's still happening in your application. If you want to do um, like the travel and lodging, we'll change if we have to. Like so ALA, those are the individuals. Like ALA. Yeah, ALA. ALA yeah. He also has a much. fall conference every year like also in does. November mm -hmm. time frame, yeah. 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 That might be a possibility to um and we can adapt. It's fine. Um so is there any quick questions about just the individual applications? No? Good. Okay. Email me if you do have a question. Um so then this third section is for bigger DE training projects. Um, these, these are intended for um, maybe staff training days or, you know, like the youth grants where you can collaborate with different community organizations or groups of libraries for much bigger projects. Um, a couple previous examples, um, you know, the ALA, Chicago, this isn't going to happen again, I doubt, but when um, I partnered with NLA, um, an in-service training day brought some speakers in, um, some different trustee and board development training. Um, so just different projects or topics that you might want for your staff or community that you might just not be able to do otherwise. Um, just think big. <laughs> um, so just like this youth grants, these would require um, the match of 25%. Um, and then you'll submit your application and then you'll get more details after it's approved or not. Um, so for, oh, that was the other thing, is you can look, there's this grants recipients database that you can click on and you can see past um, who has received grants in the past, just if you want some ideas of what's been done before. Yeah, go ahead and click on that, yeah. Holly. Good idea, thank you. Up. Yeah, so this is for all of our grants. Um, yeah. Open up the select a grant. Yeah, so if you're wondering um, if you can't remember if your library got something before or if you just want to know, like I said, ideas for um, 
what you could do for a CE grant, what you could attend, or what um, special program or professional development or in-service you could do, or what has been done for um, youth grants. Um, library improvement grants are in there too, so you can see all the different grants we have. I think we're also going to be adding, what is it? yeah, the CARES Act. Any grants that we give out that we issue from here, we try and put in here too, so you can search and see um, what has been done going back, I think, 2008. I don't know how far back the dates go. Yeah. So, get some ideas from there, definitely. Yep. Okay. So that, I mean, it's the basics of the CE grants. If you have any questions, obviously let me know. Um, oops. So for the online learning and the conference grants, for the individuals, you'll need um, the grant application, and then you'll need this um, acknowledgement of support form. Just same thing, just quick. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wrong thing, wrong button. Well, anyway. Um, just your director or your board president to sign um, saying that if you do get a grant, they'll support your participation. Um, and then the larger CE projects, you'll need the application and the signature page. Um, so then I won't go through, let's see. Can you see this? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So then the application for the online learning or to attend a conference will look like this, um, I just needed to get a couple little things updated in the online form. Um, it'll just be what conference or course are you attending, dates. The justification is just what are you hoping to learn from this class? How does it relate to your work? Um, and then expenses again. So if you're taking a class, you'll just need the registration cost most likely, unless um, they need you to buy a book or something with it. Um, but just you can put that down too. And then for conference, if you're planning on an in-conference, um, you know, the lodging, meals, and mileage and the total at the bottom, and then you'll submit that. And then for the larger CE, oops, projects, um, this looks just like Sally's youth grant application. Um, you'll tell me the information up top. Um, what are the goals? What are you hoping to get through it? Um, or wh what are you hoping your staff or your group will learn from this speaker? Um, you know, for example, if you're doing maybe uh, sign language for your virtual learning, um, are you hoping that they learn a certain amount of signs that they can do in their online uh, virtual programs? Um, are you just hoping that they learn maybe more about accessibility with virtual programs? Just, you know, let us know what the goal is. So then just a description, timeline, um, what, again, what's your CE need based on in the background? So is this something that you've noticed um, in your community that's an issue that you're hoping you, you can address by doing this training? Um, or is this something maybe other libraries have talked about that you want addressed? Um, who's going to be involved? Again, this is really similar to Sally, so I won't go through everything. Um, the dates of the project, proposed budgets, um, materials, training. Um, I guess the biggest thing, once you go through this, if you have any questions at all, just email me, call me, and we will just go through it together. Mm -hmm. um, but is there any questions or anything else that I might have missed? Um, they are due December 9th. Mm -hmm. um, the plan is to open October 5th, right after the ARSL conference. Right. Um, I think that's about it for mine. There are no questions in the little question box, so okay. at this point. But if you yeah. think of one later. Yeah. <laughs> you guys or once know. you start looking at the applications. Yeah. yeah, you know where to find us here, absolutely. Um, no, I think that was everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, the CE ones, um, I misspoke earlier, because of the conference happening that these current grants, the 2020 grants are for, you know, one thing at a time, <laughs> once that wraps up, then the CE for the next year um, will open up. Um, I was looking on the ARSL website and actually they had the, um, they don't have anything about what their, where their 2021 conference would be, but they did um, receive a an IMLS uh, Laura Bush 21st Century grant to do a leadership institute oh. um, ne in the next couple of years, actually, um, a three years. So uh, that could be something I was thinking that maybe um, we could help with funding for that. Um, there's not, there's, yeah, um, they just announced they got it. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Of course, now I can't find it. I was looking it up on my phone trying to find about their conferences. But, um, they said in December they'll have more information about applying to their uh, thing that, 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 that they've received. So um, keep an eye on that, and that might be something that you could, um, there we go, Leadership Institute. Outstanding in their field, ARSL Leadership Institute is what they're calling it. Stay tuned for oh. details. Yeah. So, um, yes. Oh, there. If you can still see my screen. Yeah. Yeah, and they have a PDF press release where I believe it says December they will open up with applications to participate will become available in December. Um, nothing about cost yet, but keep an eye. So that might be something that, that would our CE grants would be. Um, you know, we talk about think outside the box, think of things different you could do. That's a perfect example that just kind of popped right up <laughs> while I was looking for something else. You never know. <laughs> Great. So um, keep an eye out for more information from them about that. Yeah. We, 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 we love ARSL or I don't know, some people who work with them call, actually pronounce it ARSL, the acronym, but rural and small libraries. We are all about them here. Most of our libraries here in Nebraska are rural and small. So um, definitely look at them for more um, comments and resources and events and things. All right. Anybody have any questions about any of our grants? I'm going to pull back control of my screen again to wrap things up. What do I have up in this left? Back to the main page. There we go. Am I showing the main page? You're showing the grant. Yeah. The yeah. Grant great. Okay. Cool. All right. So, anybody have any desperate last minute questions you want to ask of us right now about any of the grants we have open or opening? Um, youth and internship grants are open now. Go ahead and submit to them. Look for CE ones to open next month, right after the ARSL conference is over. Uh, library improvement, keep your eyes out for information coming about that, whether we will or will not have that one. Um, we have some years skip them because of just not having the budget for it. Um, we'll see what happens this year. Sometimes it's just a much smaller budget. We'll see what, what how it goes. <laughs> I vote for a bigger budget this year, but I don't well, know that that's we, we, gonna make a difference. We can vote for that all we want. Depends <laughs> on what the federal government, the LSTA funding does for us. There are opportunities out there for us to have more funding. We're still waiting to hear. So anything coming up with questions? There are no. not questions. All right, that's okay. Um, you guys know where to find us, as I said before. Um, apply for the grants. Um, ask reach out to each of us, depending on which grant you're looking for, and um, we can help you get them all submitted. We want to give out this money, absolutely. Yeah. And right now you see here on this page, it does have this is to sign up to attend the, this Encompass Live today. As soon as I have the recording ready, I will change this link and it'll be the recorded session. So if you um, wanted to re-listen to what we talked about today, or if you're someone else who you want to watch the recording of what we talked about today, one of your other staff member, your youth person, your board members or something, um, you'll have a link. This will please change to the link to the watch the recording. So I will say that will wrap it up for today's show. And I'll show you here on our Encompass Live website, the archives are all here right underneath. Our upcoming shows, most recent ones go at the top of the list. So today's will be here. Um, this one from last week, we had a recording and a presentation slides. There's no slides for this one, obviously. We just showed you everything on the website. For, so for today, it will just have a link to the recording. Um, our recordings are all hosted on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, so everyone can watch them on there. Um, after, when the recording is ready, by the end of this week, um, this is my goal, as long as um, should be done by the end of this week. 
uh, it's on this go to webinar and youtube cooperate i will email every all of you who attended today and who registered for today's show to let you know um, that it is ready um, but while we're here on the archives i just want to show you we do a search feature here where you can search our show archives i was talking about that earlier that you, you know we have all sorts of different topics we have you can search the entire archives or just most recent 12 months if you want to um, that is because this is the full archives for all of our shows since the show premiered. And I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because that'll just make you dizzy. Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So we have over 10 years worth of recordings here on this list, um, which I think is great. And we will keep posting them there. You know, we are librarians, librarians, librarians. This is what we do. We archive things for historical purposes. We'll always have them up here as long as we can, as long as this technology allows for us. Um, but just to pay attention, if you do do a search on here or do watch any of your old recordings, they all have the original broadcast date here, so you can, you'll know when they were first broadcast, because some things may change since the time it was broadcast. Um, services and products may change completely, websites might have moved, some things might no longer exist at all anymore. I know there's some things we've had five, eight years ago that the product just no longer is happening. So just pay attention to the dates. Some things will take, uh, stand the test of time, things like summer reading, you know, book reading lists or things like that, of course. Um, but depending on what it is, you know, things might be um, old and outdated. But just pay attention to the date of anything that you're watching, the original broadcast date. You will, you can receive CE credits, you know, continuing, continuing education from us here at the Commission for watching our live shows here or for watching our um, recordings. Um, if you're here in Nebraska, we've got a form here that you can just submit and say, yep, I watched an archive recording. Um, if you're not from Nebraska, you'd have to talk to one of your own, you know, whoever at your, in your uh, state uh, handles all of that. Uh, and Compass Live does also have a um, Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, I've got a link here. Give us a like over there. We post reminders about the shows, uh, new shows that are coming up, uh, when the recordings are ready, anything else you find that may be of interest. So if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, you can do that. We also post to other social media, Twitter and Instagram. I'm not sure where else we're on now. Uh, NCUMP Live is our hashtag. So that's for our archives. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is gonna be work on your WordPress websites. Pretty sweet tech, revamping your WordPress website. Once a month, the last Wednesday of the month, usually, uh, Amanda Sweet, who is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, comes on to Encompass Live and does something tech-related. Um, so if you're a big techie person, hers is this show to definitely keep an eye on. And this month, she's going to talk about updating your um, WordPress site. So if you do use WordPress, um, definitely something you want to look into. Here in Nebraska, we do offer free WordPress websites for any public library that wants one. And you can reach out to Amanda about that as well. Well, other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Holly and Sally, for being here um, to talk about our grants. Sorry about the noise. Hopefully, it wasn't too <laughs> disruptive. Um, and uh, we will see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.